I'm here at the World Economic Forum with Usama Fayyad, the Executive Chairman of Oasis 500, a Jordanian incubator and accelerator. Uh, Usama, we just heard from three companies that Oasis 500 incubated, Jamalon, uh, Madfuat, and Curlstone Studios. What made you want to take these companies on? So, um, investing in any very early stage or seed stage company typically involves investing primarily in the people because the idea at that early stage is very likely to change. So we put the people through a lot of tests that basically really test their commitment, their dedication, their mentorability, their ability to take uh, criticism and act on it, uh, and finally their, their responses to when we do stress testing of their business models. So, you know, when you tell an entrepreneur, you know, what happens if this customer segment doesn't exist, what happens if the market doesn't take off here, what do you do? And then you observe, you know, how they react to it. Are they trying to problem solve or are they trying just to make it happen regardless? Um, so, it's primarily the person and then comes the idea. The idea has to be feasible and the primary thing we look for in the idea is that its market is either regional and or global. Uh, so, we require the scalability. So going through the companies, um, the thing that got us most excited about Gemalon is basically the vision that they want to be the Amazon of the Middle East. Uh, they actually uh, brought very relevant numbers and research that showed that, for example, $500 million is spent on books per year uh, in the Middle East uh, and, and North Africa in a, in a world where when you ask the typical person, They'll tell you, no, you know what, the Arab population doesn't read. The other observation they made is people like to read in both languages. And now in, in three, they're going to support French for North Africa. Uh, is another thing that we saw that they understood their market. And secondly, they had a very clear vision as to how they want to exit. Uh, who do they want to be acquired by? For what reasons? Uh, so it was structured as a business. They had early traction and they have the commitment, and, and now they're going to be raising their, their next major round. Uh, what excited us about Curlstone Studios is, uh, of course this is all in addition to the people, is basically the vision that the Arab world needs uh, Arab content online and on a mobile that is actually relevant to the Arab region, that is actually localized in a fundamental way, not dubbed in an Arabic language, but actually created from the ground up based on, say, an Arabic character or an Arabic joke or a local situation. Uh, we think that's very relevant. We think that's always going to be relevant. We think that local, is, is, local content is king. Uh, and uh, they have a very powerful edge here in their use of technology and in their innovative business model in terms of they're not just a production studio, but they're actually doing it for the mobile with some innovative monetization schemes, and they're doing it on the web with some very interesting marketing schemes uh, where they do webisodes and so forth, and, and they do them well. Uh, the third company you talked about, too, was Matfuatcom, Nasser. Uh, Matfuatcom was very interesting because they address a market pain that is so clear. Uh, anybody in, in this country and in this region and, and, and in the Arab world in general knows the pain of having to pay the bill, making sure they got credited right, getting alerted at the right time so that they can avoid this connection of services. Uh, all the inconveniences of paying the bills, this, this is a world that's still way, way back. You have to either go to the post office or actually go to a bank physically to do the payment, if not to the company itself. So we thought they are addressing a market they had a vision for how to take it regional very quickly, as well as what the right partnerships that are needed. You know, Nasser had a very clear set of asks. You know, I want to meet with these people, I want to strike these relationships, I want to do this kind of structure, and he's executed on that. So uh, th those are the things that, that got us uh, very encouraged by the same Great. And um, do you think that thinking about scaling from the get-go uh, should be something that all entrepreneurs do? Um, I don't know if I'd say you, you have to think about scaling from the get-go. I mean, the, the first thing you have to think about is market need and are you building something that somebody really, really wants. That's
That's the number one thing. Now, once you've determined you have a market need, then the second question becomes is, who's the market? Is it a market of one, or is it a market of 10, or is it a market of 10 million, or is it a market of a billion, or is it the entire planet of you know, six, seven billion now? Uh, so we definitely, it's, it's a follow-on question, but we, in the early stage, we have them focused, first of all, on the value of the product, the market need they address, and you know, how, how good is the product they create. We think monetization is easy if you have the market need and if that market need has scale. So um, you know, we would not be interested in very, very local plays. Uh, every investment we make has to be at least regional or global in its nature. I see. And uh, once companies leave Oasis 500, how do you cushion that transition? It seems they probably are very cozy, even though you're throwing things at them and challenging them. They get very cozy maybe inside Oasis 500. How do you help them once they're out? That's a very, it's a very tough process. You know, these, these are our children. So letting them go so quickly, I mean, you know, the first time we left the first wave leave, my team was in tears. And I had to like tell them, you know, wake up and stop. Uh, because we're going to have to be doing this with 500 others. Uh, it's, it's, it's a you know, bittersweet moment when, when you launch them and you just basically say you know, you're on your own. Uh, however, they're always an Oasis 500 company and they're always with us. Now, the first thing I'll say is being with Oasis 500 is far from being in a cozy, comfortable environment. They are actually in a very stressful environment where uh, they are subjected to our 100-day plan which uh, is a very intensive, you know, they, they all think the boot camp is tough to get in at first. And they all sort of celebrate when they get their, you know, $15,000 worth of funding and incubation and acceleration. And then they realize, oh, acceleration means, you know, these guys are checking in on me daily, I have to report weekly, and then monthly I have to do performance day, which is essentially a mini board meeting with the other peers from the same wave there to basically catch the learnings, to provide examples, positive or negative, to share uh, uh, experiences and so forth. Very, very useful to them, but of course very painful. So being at Oasis 500 is actually you know, a very exhausting you know, 24 hours, 100 day <laughs> uh, intensive experience. And my worry, uh, frankly, here when they leave, is that they might relax when they leave us, which is if they leave an environment where we didn't give them a lot of cash, uh, we give them a lot of guidance, and we give them a lot of pushing and a lot of incentives. Uh, and now they enter a zone where they actually have more money than they ever had before. And they start perceiving that they have the luxury of time. Now that's a fear on my part that they start perceiving that. Luckily many of them are not showing any bad signs out there, but, but that is the biggest worry I have about them when they leave. Now they stay plugged in with the network, so they get invited to all of our events, all of our visitors, all of our mentor activities. Uh, you know, these are our investments for a long time. So we actually continue to help them, we continue to strike deals with them, uh, we continue to give them advice as they raise follow-on rounds, as they have problems with their investors, as they start having board issues. Um, so as I'm describing all of this to you, I'm getting scared as to what happens when there's 500 of these guys and we have to worry about them all the time. But uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough on both sides. You know, they feel sad leaving. Um, they feel glad typically because they got follow-on funding. And some of them leave before, you know, the 100 days up, but they haven't attracted that funding and they're in that very fragile zone where, you know, we have high confidence they will get an investment, but, you know, that, that doesn't buy the payroll at the end of the month. So we work with them very closely to make sure that they're well funded, that, that they are bridged until the next round. And in some cases, we do a secondary investment if needed. I see. Well, I hope that their staying connected through their own network will also help keep them honest yes. and hungry. I, I think so. I, 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 hope, I hope it is. So far, our experience has been very positive. You know, everybody uh, has benefited a lot and has spoken very positively of Oasis 500. We are very vigilant. Uh, if I ever hear a criticism or and typically what I hear are sort of ill-founded rumors about how we operate. Uh, and I try to you know, take care of that right away because this is a market that somehow thrives on rumors and unfortunately in our region negative rumors seem to dominate the positive ones. So hopefully we'll, we'll flip the picture and soon there'll be a lot of positive rumors and we'll be setting expectations down. No doubt, no doubt. 
Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts with Lambda. All right. Thank you. Thank you.